again, thank you everyone for coming out today. It's a real honor for Mayweather Promotions to promote this very exciting matchup at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. We're excited to bring big time boxing back and what an incredible matchup we have between these two great champions. Both have had great careers thus far and it's going to be a phenomenal fight come July 29th. And the fans are the winners. This event is promoted by Mayweather Promotions in association with Develop Entertainment. And our sponsor is Corona. And again, this is going to be a tremendous matchup. You have a guy in Adrian Braun, a four-time world champion, and Mikey Garcia, a tremendous fighter, a three-time world champion. And what better opportunity to have these two great champions come together. This is what boxing is all about. So before I get started, I'd like to uh, bring up to the stage the VP of Operations, Bellwood Entertainment, Ron Rizzo. Thank you, everybody. On uh, behalf of Lou Bell and Bell Entertainment, I just wanted to thank Leonard and me with the promotions promoting the event with us at Barclays. We did a hell of a successful event in January. It was a pleasure to work with them. And I'm looking forward to doing it again on July 29th. Um, I wanted to thank Stephen down at the right side of the podium here with um, you know, the Showtime Network. He continues to put out a great run of uh, programming throughout this year and you know July 29th is um, going to be another great event. It's one that you, know, you have two guys that are sometimes uh, the opposite end of the spectrum of personalities but uh, I believe that gets a little bit too much play because when you got them in the ring they're just really really great uh, competitors and high level fighters that the, the, you know th these are the types of fights you want to see. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to Corona, our sponsor for the event, and also um, a real shout out to Brett Dormark and Barclays Center, who continues to make it his goal to make Barclays the premier destination for boxing, and I believe he's really succeeding with that. Thank you very much. I um, can't say that there aren't enough accolades about this, this gentleman. Um, when he came over to Showtime, it was like night and day in my eyes. Um, he had a vision, and his vision was to make Showtime the premier boxing network. And ladies and gentlemen, he's done that. If, if you look back and you see all the outstanding program of programming that he's brought to us and continues to bring to us, the rollout of all the big fights with champions fighting champions, that's what boxing is about. And he's done a phenomenal job. He has an exceptional team. And the vision is to bring big time boxing back to the masses. And he's He's, again, I can't say enough of the incredible job that Steven Espinosa has done. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up the Executive Vice President and GM of Showtime Sports, Steven Espinosa. Thank you, Leonard. My apologies for keeping you guys waiting. The airlines were not cooperating this morning. Uh, but the fact that I was on an airline and I, I just came straight from the airport, tells you what kind of fight this is. Uh, I wouldn't fly out cross country for a press conference for just any fight. Uh, this is a special fight. You have two of the brightest young stars in boxing. You know, and since I did fly all this way, I'm gonna take a little bit of time, I'm gonna share two stories. It's really, I think, two brief stories that tell you everything you need to know. A few years ago, uh, Adrian decided that he was going up to 147 and the way Broder does things, he doesn't take anything easy. So he took on one of Robert Garcia's pilots, Marcos Maidana. Marcos and, and Robert must have had a great training camp because Maidana came out that night and looked, looked phenomenal. Uh, it wasn't Adrian's night. A lot of fighters would have packed it in. 
after the first three or four rounds. And I mean pack it in, you know, maybe they find a way out of the fight, but at the very minimum, you know, maybe they're just playing it safe, trying to get through the, the rest of the fight to get to the end. That's not what Broner did. What Broner did, he fought harder and harder. And if you know Marcos McDonough, that's one of the toughest fights of anyone's career. So when I saw that fight, when I saw that night in San Antonio, was Adrian Broner's heart. And I will never, ever doubt what Adrian Broner brings to the table based on what he showed me that night. You know, and, and my, my key in his own quiet way uh, is very similar. There are a lot of situations where a fighter isn't happy with a promoter, um, there's a dispute, sometimes a lawsuit. More often than not, you know, the fighter gets impatient, you know, needs to make some money, needs to get a fight, you know, doesn't stick to his principles. But what Mikey did for two and a half years shows you what kind of backbone he has. And Mikey had his beliefs, he knew what was right and wrong, and if it meant he was going to sit out for two years, he was going to sit out for two years. He's made his point, he got his freedom, now he's in charge of his own career. And that's two and a half long years of sticking to your guns and not backing down. So the reason that I'm here, the reason why I flew cross country for this fight, is because I know it'll be a good fight. I know neither of these guys is going to back down. I know they're going to bring their all. And I know they're going to bring up the best in the show. Next, um, I'd like to call up, and he, in my eyes, is a very exceptional trainer. He's been around the game for a long, long time. I've had the pleasure of knowing this gentleman for a number of years. Uh, he was he was competing and was world champion back when uh, Floyd was world champion back in the day. Um, he's done a tremendous job of training a number of excellent fighters. Um, he has an excellent stable of fighters. And again, I'm sure he'll have Mikey very, very prepared come July 29th. So without further ado, none other than Robert Garcia. How's everybody doing? I just want to thank everybody for being here. We get a lot of support here in, in Southern California with a lot of our friends, reporters, family. We are very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, Mike is, uh, Mike is going to be 100% ready for the fight, just like we know Brunner's going to do the same. He, uh, he knows this is uh, a hard fight, so we are we're preparing like, like never before. You know, we uh, we're gonna come out and do our do our job, and uh, hopefully, you know, we get the, the support and you know all the way to New York from Southern California fans. But you know, we know we have great fans in New York. It's always great to be in New York. We we are very thankful that uh, Blue Devil is involved. Mayweather promotions are involved. It's it's, it's it's gonna be a hell of a uh, hell of a show. I'm sure the fans are gonna enjoy. Uh, great night of boxing on um, July 29th. Thank you, guys. Hey, Mike. Also, another great trainer who I've been knowing for quite some time. He, he's uh, one of the most underrated trainers in all of the game. And a um, good friend of mine. And he's, he's been working with a, a number of these young kids. Uh, not only with just developing their skills as fighters, but just to, just overall just raising these young men or teaching them these life skills that, you know, that will last forever for a lifetime. So without further ado, um, I'd like to bring up a very dear friend and an outstanding trainer, Mike Stafford. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Uh, Robert says that, uh, that I'm just praying the family is here to support Mike, and, and, and that's what it should be. You know, these kids put their life on the line, and that's the number one thing. 
You know, we want these two kids right here to come out of this, this fight healthy, you know. I mean, it's, it's a business, but we also want them to be healthy. And I see you here to support it. Uh, I'd like to thank the media for being here too. Al Hayden uh, Promotions, uh, in uh, Productions, you know, put this fight together. And also I'd like to thank Mayweather Promotions and Lou DeBella, which is a very good friend of mine. Louis, Lou, uh, I met Lou back in 2000 when he uh, formed a lot, of, a lot of the boxers back then, you know, for TV. So Louis, Lewis has been, been around boxing quite a while. Uh, I like to thank Steve. Steve, he's, he's a good guy. He's kind of like me, quiet, laid back. <laughs> you know, I like his style, though. You know, he's a good guy. He get the job done. His staff is tremendous, you know. Uh, as Mike, you know, Robert, know, you know, they work with him. They're just tremendous people. You guys don't see them, get the back of it, but, you know, the back scene of it. But the, Showtime is like like uh, Leonard says, it's number one boxing right now. You know, I've been with HBO, I've been with uh, ESPN, you know, all kind of networks, but Showtime is number one. Uh, uh, <coughs> getting back to the fight now. Uh, this reminds me, you know, if anybody knows, it always been back in the day, you know, when we was coming up in averages and Nationals and all that, and whatever. It's always been California and Cincinnati, you know, always cream come to the top. This is this is what this would remind me of. If anyone, you know, I know you're not as media people don't understand it, but probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, this, you know, we've always been the best of LA, California, and always been the best of uh, Ohio or Cincinnati. He, we always would meet, so <clears throat> this is what this really reminded me. I remember, I remember uh, Mike's dad a lot, you know. <laughs> you know, he's a good guy, good guy. So, but, uh, you know, I'm glad to see everybody there. I want everybody to try to make it up to uh, the ball play, which is a beautiful, beautiful venue. And, you know, as, as they say, let's get it on, okay? Next gentleman, um, can't say enough, there's not enough accolades to, to go around about him. Um, he has 36 wins under his belt, an exceptional fighter, um, and he's come back. He, he took a little time off, um, but he's come back with a vengeance. Um, he's beat everybody that's been put in front of him, and he's beat him in a very impressive fashion. Um, he's the newly, he's the newly lightweight champion, and he continues to show his talents inside the ring. And he put on a very, very impressive performance in his last fight. Um, again, he's a very, very impressive fighter, a three division world champion, and one of the best fighters in the world. So, without further ado, I'd like to bring up three division world champion Mikey Garcia. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, joining us today. I mean, I'm very happy to, uh, to be here. I'm happy to be back and, uh, you know, have the fights that I believe I deserve, have the fights that will uh, please the crowd, please all the fans. You know, it's, uh, it's great to be getting this fight with Adrian Broner. Everybody already knows the kind of fighter that he is. You know, he's not a four division champion for no reason, you know, the skills are there, the talent is there. Um, I'm undefeated, three division world champion, can't deny the skills that I have also. What does that do? That just makes for a great fight. You know, you got two of the best fighters fight, fighting each other. You know, that, that's what boxing is about, that's what we want, that's what I want to give the fans. That's why I'm not taking on an easy title defense. I'm not taking on an easy opponent at 135 that I can just get in the ring, beat him up and walk home. I'm here to take on bigger challenges, bigger fights, so that the fans can really appreciate the sport of boxing. These are the fights that will be most memorable. 
And I think this fight could be fight of the year. We're, we're, we're so even when, when it comes to, you know, our, our accolades and our achievements. You know, when he's at his best, man, he's one hell of a fighter. I'm always at my best. So you can never, never doubt me. And when we get in the ring, that's what you're going to see. One hell of a fight. I'm getting in shape to make sure that I win this fight because I think this launches my career even more and opens up bigger doors. I'm sure he wants to do the same. And that's why he's taking things more serious. He's moved his camp to Colorado. And he knows what's in front of him. He knows it ain't no easy fight for him either. You know, and like I said, that's, that's the, what the ingredients are to be, to be a great fight. To make a great fight, you got to fight the best and train your heart out. July 29th, you know, the Barclays Center is going to be one hell of a place to be at. Welcome everybody to come and join us because we're going to have a great fight. You know, um, if you can't make it, make sure you're watching on Showtime. Don't miss it. I really think it's going to be one of those fights that you're going to talk for, for years to come. With that, just uh, want to end. Say thank you, guys. Really appreciate all the love and support, man. Thank you. Before I bring up Adrian, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the CEO of About Building Promotion, Rabbi Little John. He's done an outstanding job with working with their young fighters and getting them to the level they have a couple world champions. And again, great job, Ron. Um, it was just, I think it was Sunday, yeah, it was yesterday. Sunday, me and Floyd were at the skating ring, and um, a friend of mine had called me, and he was like, uh, did you see the odds on the fight? I said, what fight? Floyd and Conor? He said, no, nah, uh, Adrian and, and Mike. Now look, I said, plus 500? Adrian and Ron? I said, excuse my friend, I said, they got this thing fucked up. Um, there's no way in the hell, in my eyes, that Adrian Brown is no plus 500 to anybody. He's been, um, in my eyes, he's a, a very, very talented young fighter. That sometimes uh, he's had some ups and downs in his career. But it's happened to the best. It's happened to Floyd Mayweather. You know, he's been able to overcome it. Um, and I see no difference in Adrian Ron. When he's focused, he's definitely one of the best fighters in the world. I've seen him on his A game. And again, part of the learning process when you're young, you're going to make mistakes. And it's okay. But uh, Adrian needs to be thankful and grateful that he has an opportunity. And I'm not going to say to redeem himself because he knows what he's got to do. He's been on the big stage before. And I think, in my eyes, that this is going to be a great, great fight. You guys are going to see a different Adrian Bryan. And I know he's probably said it in the past, but what it takes a lot of times is another great fighter, like a Mikey Garcia, who's world-renowned as a great fighter. And we know what Mikey does. Mikey knocks guys out. He knocks them out cold. Um, and Adrian Bryan, He's flashy, he's flamboyant, and he's slick. A lot of the things in my eyes that Mikey was able to do to a lot of the other guys, he's not going to be able to do that to Adrian. But Adrian will be sitting right there, and he's going to be dishing it. You know, he's, uh, he's very, a very, very accomplished fighter. He has all the skills in the world. And I think that he knows that with this kind of platform, there's no second chances when it comes to this kind of fight. He's got to be at his best because Mikey Garcia is the real deal. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up the very accomplished, he's the youngest four division world champion in boxing history, none other than Adrian, the problem, Brian. Y'all still cool. Y'all 
I, after I get done fucking him up, y'all, we, we, we still family. We still family. The twins, all y'all. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I love that guy. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just thankful, man. You know, I, I've been through a lot of things, man. I've been through a lot of things in my life. My, my 27 years that I've been living, you know, I've been through a lot. I've accomplished a lot, and I'm still here. You know, I had my ups and downs in boxing, and um, this is just a time for me to just step up and take what's mine. You know, um, after this fight, hopefully I get my due diligence, you know, uh, after I beat Mikey. You know, um, no disrespect to him. You know, I ain't got no bad blood to him, but, you know, I'm coming to fuck him up, but, you know, and that's just, that's just that, you know, because five to one, that's just his part. I can't, I can't, I can't get that out of my mind. It's like, man, Dude, these motherfuckers, I'm a bad motherfucker, man. For real, man. Like, 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 look, look, man. I'm the only motherfucker, I, I'm the only one in here that can go across the street. And if I shake a light pole, I bet money drop out the top of that motherfucker, man. I'm a bad man, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. Like, they tripping. Like, man, come on, man. And, and I know why I got a lot of critics. I know why a lot of people don't like me. Because, cause like, I mean, that's cool, but, like, I got what everybody wants. I don't care. Everybody in the whole universe. I got cold hard cash, man. <laughs> everybody need that, man. I'm, everybody need cash, man. I ain't, I ain't somebody that's gonna sit back like I, I let my, my, my talent speak. I, I, I talk. I like to talk. I, let, I got cold hard cash. That's why y'all hate me. That's why y'all hate me. Everybody need that. Everybody. Even a monkey need cash. He just ain't got pockets to put it in. Yeah. Come on, man. Come on, man. Now everybody is screaming my name because I had two, two bad nights of boxing. That happened to the best of them. You know what I'm saying? You not get knocked down, you get up. Shit. He done knocked down before by some little motherfuckers. <laughs> he ain't been talking about, he ain't been talking about nobody like me before. Like I said, man, let's switch opponents. Give me all 36 of his opponents in, and he take all mine. And then let's see what our records will be. I know I'll be 36 and over 36 knockouts. Point blank, period. So, after July 29th, which is a birthday party to me, because my birthday is July 28th, I'm weighing in on my birthday. So y'all think I'm gonna miss weight on my birthday? I can't miss weight on my birthday. So this is a this is gonna be a coming out party for me. Um, I know Robert Garcia is gonna have him ready. Um, everybody's probably looking like oh, Robert Garcia beat him once with Madonna, but that's a different fight. You know, um, I tip my hat to him. He was, you know, uh, successful in that fight. Madonna was a friend of mine. You know, hopefully after the fight we all can go out and have fun and have steak. But July 29th, man, I will be victorious. You know, uh, I really don't care what they do, what, uh, how, how good they think they train. You know, I'm taking training serious. You know, this just put the spark back in me in boxing. And, you know, after this fight, you know, I will be taking over the sport of boxing, man. Real talk. July 29th, everybody be there at Barclay Center. About business. Let's do it.
Get my two.